It is almost that time once again to get the new FARC racing season underway for 2016. And as you may have noticed, FARC's top series is now known as the FARC Smash Beer Low Dollar Series. Discount Chain Low Dollar has stepped up to join Smash Beer as title sponsor of the series. Low Dollar and FARC Racing is a match made in heaven. Just as anyone can compete in FARC, no matter what their budget, anyone can shop at Low Dollar, no matter what their budget. But there is an even bigger change awaiting the FARC Smash Beer Low Dollar Series. Starting here in 2016, the championship will be contested with the FARC Off, a knockout tournament that kicks in after the Independence Day race at Texas Motor Speedway. FARC President Jeff Faulkner presented the FARC Off as a way to generate a tighter championship battle and to emphasize winning throughout the season. Also, interestingly enough, the Farkoff eligibility rules will also allow drivers running on a part-time schedule to potentially compete for the championship. The idea behind that being that showing up to all the races doesn't necessarily mean your championship material. What's more important is being fast whenever you can show up. It'll be interesting to see if any of the drivers and teams running a partial schedule can take advantage of that and potentially be hoisting the championship trophy. Now, here's how the Fark Off will work. After race number 10 in the championship, the Accelerating America Twin 76s at Texas Motor Speedway, 15 drivers will advance to the Fark Off and have their points reset equally. The first drivers to earn Fark Off spots will be those who have won races during the 2016 season, Winning a single race will uh, qualify you for the Fark Off as long as you maintain a top 40 spot in the driver's standings, but winning two or more races will qualify you for the Fark Off regardless of your points position. After the race winners are placed into the Fark Off, the remaining spots will be determined through a point standing, starting with the highest driver in the standings with no victories. It should be noted that there are 15 spots in the Farkoff, but only 13 points races before the Farkoff kicks in, so at least two positions will be determined through points. After the 15 Farkoff eligible drivers are determined, three races will be run. After race number 13, the Vicar Collision and Glass Double at the Grand Detour Raceway, five drivers will be eliminated from championship contention, and the remaining 10 drivers will have their points reset once again. Any Farkoff driver who wins a race during this three race stretch will automatically advance to the next round, while the rest of the spots will be determined once again by points. Three more races will be run, and after the Empire Rent-A-Car duels at Talladega, the bottom five drivers will be eliminated once again, and the final five drivers will advance to the championship round, the Low Dollar Lone Star Championships at Texas World Speedway, where the highest finisher amongst the final five will take home the 2016 FARC Smash Beer Low Dollar Series Championship. By the way, you may have noticed something about the names of some of these races. That brings me to another twist for this season. All three of the Fark Off Elimination Rounds, Texas Motor Speedway, Grand Detour Raceway, and Talladega Super Speedway will be double headers. So if you're a driver and you fail to secure a spot in the next Fark Off Round during Race 1, You'll get to try again in race two, as long as you don't drop out of the first race. Any teams that fail to finish race one will not be allowed to start race two, and their spots will be given to teams that had initially failed to qualify. Now that we've gone over the Farkoff and all of its details, one of the biggest changes in uh, series history, Let's go over the schedule for the 2016 FARC Smash Beer Low Dollar Series season. The series will return to the two and a half mile Daytona International Speedway in Florida to kick off the season. Daytona has hosted the season opener more often than any other track on the calendar. We'll start the weekend off with the annual Apex Racing School Rookie Shootout. That's always a fun race. 25 bonus points goes to the winner, as well as a guaranteed starting spot in the Smash Beer Get Smash 200. The rest of the field will be determined by the Lobo Twin 100s, the qualifying races. But the qualifiers for the Smash Beer 200 will have a little twist this year. They will count for points and fark off eligibility. So if one driver can sweep uh, their qualifying race and the Smash Beer 200, they will safely be in the Fark Off. 
After Daytona, we go short track racing for the next three weeks, starting with the Sayre Speedway in Alabama. A little quarter miler with a very charming hole in the wall atmosphere all around. After that, we head out west to the Albuquerque Speed Bowl in New Mexico. By the way, the Albuquerque Speed Bowl recently welcomed FARC veteran Leslie Riggs as their new promoter. She will be competing at Daytona and Sayre Speedway to promote the FARC race at Albuquerque. And then she'll be stepping out of the car and into the control tower. We wish her luck in her new career. Uh, the Albuquerque Speed Bowl is a very fun little track. Short straightaways, uh, long corners, and a very strong top groove. Race four of the championship will be at the Elko Speedway in Minnesota, the Minnesota Auto Sales 200. Uh, Elko Speedway at 3 eighths of a mile is the second shortest track that we will visit this year. Only the Sayre Speedway is shorter. After the short tracks, we have two road races in a row. The first will be north of the border at the Mosport International Raceway in Bowmanville, Ontario for the Duckroll Tires 200. Duckroll Tires, the official tire supplier of FARC Racing, is based in Ontario. Road America will be the next stop uh, for the Farm Stop 160. It's only a 40 lap race, but Road America is four miles long, the longest track that FARC will visit this year. Last year's Farm Stop 160 was absolutely soaked. Cars are spinning off left and right, and uh, Dan Lechleiter survived the carnage to take the victory. Hopefully this year's race will be cleaner and drier. But after Road America, we get back to oval racing, starting at the Darlington Raceway. Very uh, narrow, very tight, and it's uh, very uncommon to escape Darlington without hitting the wall at least once. Indeed, earning the Darlington Stripe is a rite of passage in American stock car racing. Uh, in fact, the next two tracks are just as treacherous. The 7077 Speedway in Cambridge, Ohio will be the first dirt race of the year. If you thought hitting the wall at Darlington was bad, I don't recommend trying it at 7077. You will go for a tumble. But then again, FARC pays you a $2,000 bonus if you flip your car over, so I guess it's not all bad. After 7077, we have the Master Spark 200 at the High Banked Half Mile. Salem Speedway in central Indiana. And finally, we will have the doubleheader at the Texas Motor Speedway, the Accelerating America Twin 76s, to determine the 15-man field for the Fark Off. The start of Fark Off Round 1 will take us through New England, starting at the New Hampshire Motor Speedway, the flat mile-long oval in Loudoun, New Hampshire, the Joe's Tree and Lawn Care 100, and then we will go road racing once again at Watkins Glen International to toss in a little challenge for our Farkoff contenders before heading back to the Midwest for the Vicker Collision and Glass Double at the Grand Detour Raceway, the Farkoff Elimination Race at the High Banked, Very Wide and Very Dangerous Grand Detour Raceway. Sparks will be flying in more than one way as five drivers will be eliminated from championship contention. The remaining 10 drivers will start duking it out Labor Day weekend at the DuCoin State Fair in DuCoin, Illinois, the mile-long dirt oval at the State Fairgrounds. And then once everyone has had their fill of racing and fried candy bars at the State Fair, we head back south to the Fairground Speedway in Nashville, the half mile in Nashville for the Prism River 200. After Nashville will be the next elimination round, the Empire Rent-A-Car Duels at Talladega Super Speedway. And as we all know, anything can happen at Talladega, so everybody on the grid, especially the Farkoff contenders, will have to be on their toes. And finally, once the dust settles at Talladega, we will determine once and for all the 2016 FARC Smash Beer Low Dollar Series Champion at the Texas World Speedway, the Low Dollar Lone Star Championships. The final five will enter, but only one can be champion. And all that you have to do to become champion is to beat your other four rivals. No bonus points, no trickery, just good hard racing. We've shown you the Fark Off, we've shown you the schedule, but none of this would be possible without the competitors. Let's give it up for all of the teams and drivers who have thrown their hats into the ring during this offseason, and I'm sure as the season goes on, there will be many more showing up. 
Dale Clow will be entering the FARC Smash Beer Low Dollar Series after contesting the FARC Truck Series for the past couple of years. Um, he hasn't been very fast in that series, but by showing up to all of the races, he has uh, secured himself a uh, notable presence and some top 10 points finishes. He will be sharing the Zero Car with Kirby Krieger and Keegan Mallory throughout the season, and he will also be fielding the Double Zero Car full-time for Troy Peterson, who brings sponsorship from Binko, making the full season possible. Pearson Sweeney Motorsports changes their driving lineup for this season. Billy Ray Smith Thompson got signed to the number two Smash Beer Lennard, one of the most iconic cars on the fart grid. He also brings his home house sponsorship over to Pearson Sweeney Motorsports. Smith Thompson has been running a limited schedule in FARC for the past few years, but he does have a full season of FARC truck racing under his belt. In fact, he uh, won the race at Albuquerque in, I believe, 2014. He had lapped the field, but flipped his truck over, but he soldiered on and won the race anyway. I'm sure that ability to persevere and make the most of a bad situation helped him land the ride at Pearson Sweeney. And uh, Bradley Carlisle takes over the number eight car, bringing his lucky 777 Cola sponsorship. Carlisle won at Toledo last year a as a rookie from third place after first and second ran out of fuel. Big Deal Racing will be making their series debut with Farrell Burgundy behind the wheel and sponsorship from KVWN Channel 4, a news station based in San Diego. Big Deal Racing will be fielding LaCoyas purchased from uh, Power Steering Incorporated's shop. Uh, Power Steering Incorporated has sold cars to a number of teams this season. More on that as we get to them. Mike Malone will be returning to the series, advertising uh, his sandwich shop, Knuckle Sandwiches, based in Los Angeles. If you're in LA and you've never dropped by Knuckle Sandwiches, what are you doing with your life? Get over there right away. It is amazing. Team Thunder will compete for the championship once again with Bob Steffens. 2016 will be Steffens' 10-year uh, anniversary in FARC. Uh, he has never won a race, but still managed to finish third in the championship last year. And Anthony, Anthony Griffith will return for a par partial schedule in the Steelhawk 07 car. Taylor Brillen finds a new home at Motor Assault Racing, bringing the C9 Antifreeze sponsorship with her. Apparently, uh, the reason she won't be returning to M&J Racing is because they were going to charge C9 more than they were willing to spend in uh, sponsorship bills. So Brillen had to search for a ride with a lower budget team. She will be joined in uh, car number nine by Riley Knight, the road racer. She will be competing at the road courses, but Leslie Riggs will be in the car for the first two races, Daytona and Sayre Speedway, promoting the Fark race at Albuquerque. Truman Ellison will be bringing his single car team back this year, that uh, very bright pink number 03 car that won't be easy to miss. New team for this year, Harv Henry Racing, fielding car number 04, uh, driven by Harv Henry and Jose Perez this season. Jason Bates, after departing from Pearson Sweeney Motorsports, finds a new home with his uh, good friend James West's team, uh, Wild West Racing, driving the number 09 and 69 cars. Car 69 will be shared by uh, Bates, James West, Tristan Kristoff, and Johnson Clapp. Lechleiter Racing returns to the series. Dan Lechleiter going for a championship run once again. Robert Lechleiter competing in select races. Binford Tools will be on both cars 10 and 11. Kyler Spavita will make his Spark debut in the five-star transfer in Trucking Inglesby for Centex Motorsports. Sergio Power Incorporated, the defending series champions, will return, but with a new driving lineup and a new name, Power Surge America, Billy Bob Childers and Jim Kidd return to Fark Racing for Sergio Power, the grandson of William Power, the owner of the sprawling Power Steering Incorporated uh, operation. 
Dale Underwood will make his return to the Park Smash Beer Low Dollar Series after spending a couple of years in the Modified Series, uh, driving the Mailing T-17 car for Isaac Carr. Another brand new team to the series, Ninth Plan Racing. Uh, will show up with a 19 car driven by uh, Ramsey Cockener, Sarah Wexler, and Rick Lewis. Cockener, the former adult film star, will be making his return to the series, as well as Kenny Brillen showing up once again with the Arnold Pine Racing Team. Uh, Kenny Brillen, the father of Taylor Brillen, and winner of the 1996 Rockford 200. Big Mac Racing will compete for another full season with the number 22 car, Monica Rook, returning to the series. Uh, will drive that entry for the full year. Here we have another debut team with Power Steering Incorporated equipment, Spygate Racing with Winston Orwell behind the wheel. Danica Hollifield returns for a second year in FART competition in car number 25 for SWH Racing alongside car number 51, which will be sh uh, shared by rookies Max Chevillon, Tyron Key, and Scott Wheeler. AJ Young forms his own team for the 2016 season. He will be fielding car number 26 for the full year and sharing that car between himself, Michael Day, Tiffany Birch, Keegan Mallory, and Kirby Krieger. As you may remember, Mallory and Krieger will also be competing for Dale Clow. And uh, for Daytona, Kirby Krieger will be entered in a second AJ Young car, numbered uh, 76, I think that's supposed to be. Gravity Racing will return with a new driving lineup, Zidane Quackenbush in car number 28, the 15-year-old uh, brother of uh, John Quackenbush, the accomplished road racer, and Zat Gott will be uh, driving the team's primary number 71 car with sponsorship from Protocol, which has uh, sponsored this team in the past. Focus Autosports returns with no changes. Car number 38, driven by Riley Durbin, with sponsorship from Spinner Rotors. New team for this year, Coleman's Outlaws, owned by Stan Coleman. They will be fielding two cars. Car number, car number 40, shared by Stan Coleman himself and Kyler Spavital whenever he isn't driving the 12 car. And David Lamar will be entered in car number 75 at Daytona. We don't know about any other plans Lamar might have. But apparently there have been a lot of questions surrounding the Stan Coleman team. If social media postings are to be believed, Coleman has been in and out of jail a few times. Terra International Motorsports, another team with uh, a lot of support from LaCoya, returns with three cars this season. Zach Webster going for the full season in car number 41 once again. Kira Smith joining the team as a rookie in car number 89 with sponsorship from Cluck and Bell. And car number 96, driven by Kelly Splicen, will be going for the full season as well. Cat Motorsports returns with car number 46, the Catherine Azure-owned team. Chuck Johnson will be making his debut behind the wheel of that car. Johnson finally getting away from his struggling family-owned short track team. It'll be nice to see what Johnson can do in a more stable ride in a bigger series. William Power, the head honcho over at Power Steering Incorporated, will be fielding a car himself, car number 48, with Liam O'Connor behind the wheel. Liam O'Connor has been under contract with PSI as a development driver, but he has yet to find a full-time ride anywhere. Kenny George III is another one of the rookies this season, driving a uh, car purchased from the former Messina team. Team Burr, FARC's most well-known underdogs, will be returning to the series. John Burr, competing full-time for the first time since 2004. Car number 55 will be shared by Maury Holter, Ronnie Holter, and Junior Lowe on the road courses. And car 68 will be shared by Derek Dudding, Ronnie Holter, Billy Bob Bradburn, and Tristan Kristoff. Car number 60, new team for this year, Rick Forrest Racing. Uh, driven by uh, Rick Forrest himself, he'll, and he'll be sharing that car with his brother Ryan Forrest and Junior Lowe. And Fark just wouldn't be complete without m j Racing, the oldest team in the series. They will be fielding up to four cars in certain events. Mark Thompson and Lawrence Berg sharing car 61. Car 62, also occupied by Thompson and Burr. 
with uh, appearances from Aaron Singer, Mariana Zavala, Kiefer Glanville, and Ralph West. And then car number 63 will be going full-time once again with Kevin Monroe uh, behind the wheel. Car 64 also going full-time, shared by uh, Ashley Tucker and Kevin Daly. Daly will be driving this car at the road courses. The David Hetzelone team will be moving from the Super Series to the Smash Beer Low Dollar Series this year. Todd Stater will be behind the wheel of the number 66 car full-time, and David Hetzel himself will be driving in select events in car number 67. Trek Togger, the Austrian driver, returns to the series after about a five-year absence with sponsorship from Scorpio Plasma Batteries. Ken Groves, longtime Fart car owner, returns with his number 78 car, which will be shared between Greg Gray, Jeff Wilkins, Rio Akazaro, and making his return to the se- series, uh, Jafali Anamiha. Anamiha last competed in the series in, I believe, 2010. Bruce Autosport returns to the series with that distinct uh, Silver 82 car. Lev Azarov behind the wheel full time. Unfortunately, uh, no sign of Radimir Stanichev anywhere. Desert Star Motorsports returning with three rookies. Uh, Todd Lacey, uh, Dan Francis Jr., and Aubrey Wood. They made their debut in the Smash Beer Low Dollar Series last year with Bradley Carlisle. Ike Durbin Incorporated returns with uh, car number 86. Gio Arias driving that car as a rookie this season. And in select events, they will be fielding a number 93 car driven by Riley Durbin and Vincenzo Focasato. Also, Ike Durbin has formed a partnership with Focus Auto Sports, uh, owned by Giuseppe Focasato. Riley Durbin competing at Focus Auto Sports and Vincenzo Focasato competing for Ike Durbin. John Jones returns to the series with his number 88 car driven by Joshua Pacer. No changes at that team. Wesley Family Racing will be going full time with uh, a car that will either be number 90 or 427, depending on whether Neil Miller or Stanley Parsons is driving that car. Laser Motorsports will be making their series debut uh, with car number 91, shared by Art Gordon, Jackie Thompson, and Osvaldo Ramirez. Gordon and Thompson are rookies, but Ramirez, who competed in the Super Series with m j last year, will be bringing a lot of valuable road racing experience to the team. And uh, Jackie Thompson will be in a 92 car, I believe at Daytona only. Ashcroft Family Racing returns to the series. Jack Ashcroft will be in the number 94 at Daytona, but their primary car will be number 99, shared by Jack Ashcroft, Thomas Tucker, and Julia Ashcroft. Thomas Tucker will be in this car at Daytona. Kurt Walker, the two-time series champion and brother of uh, FARC race director Jen Walker, will be returning for another limited schedule in his iconic 98 car with sponsorship once again from XL Petrol. The racing team returns to the series. Tom Brayton once again behind the wheel of car number 100. Team owner John Johnson in the past has uh, talked up an apparent rivalry with uh, Team Burr. We'll have to see if anything becomes of that. The racing team also intends to field a number 500 car at select events but uh, we don't know any further details. New team for this year, Denman Motorsports. Uh, The brothers Rebel and Zach Denman will be in cars 101 and 102, and uh, looking at them, well, they'll be easy to spot at least. Naomi Alnaco will be showing up with this team as well in a much better looking number 196 car. Racing Fever, the Matt Morgan-owned team, intends to return to the series, but we don't know who will be behind the wheel of that number 108 car just yet. They do intend to show up for Daytona, so they'll have to uh, figure things out soon. Patrick Carpino, the 1996 series champion and winner of the Rockford 200 more recently, uh, will return to the series in car number 200. shared by himself and Mason St. Martin. Green or Die Racing returns with car 422, this time shared by Allison Weatherby and Tiffany Birch. Uh, Ammunition 
hopping on board that car once again. Some uh, interesting choices in sponsorship over at Green or Die Racing, a team that uh, otherwise preaches a very pro-environmental message. And finally, Bjorn Green Racing caps the Mark Smash Beer Low Dollar Series grid with car number 919 driven by Allie Riggs bringing her Bunny Salon sponsorship. And that has been your preview for the 2016 Fark Smash Beer Low Dollar Series season. It's sure to be an exciting season with the introduction of the Fark Off, a good mix of short tracks, speedways, road courses, even dirt tracks, and a very healthy car count. We will see you all at Daytona, where we kick off the season with the Apex Racing School Rookie Shootout, and you can catch it right here on the Fark Racing Network.